All right. I know a lot of you out there, uh, gentlemen, uh, that have the nanny goat beard going. You might look a little like Mumford and Sons right now, a little ZZ Top. Maybe it's time to trim that stuff up. Maybe it's time to just get it all ready. Harry's has your grooming needs covered with high-quality blades as low as $2 each. That is cheap. Delivered straight to your doorstep. You go to Harry's, and their razors help you look your best. And you don't understand what I'm saying, because I didn't understand until I saw the product and understood what these blades were about. Harry's is a return to the essential quality durable blades that, well, some of us don't have anymore, and it's at a fair price. That's what's so different. It's just $2 per blade. That's right. You heard right. I know you're you're doing a double take. Your eyes are popping out like Roger Rabbit. $2 a blade. They cut out the middleman manufacturing blades in their German blade factory that's been honing precision blades for a century. We're talking 100 years of blades that they have perfected, which means you get incredibly high-quality blades at factory direct prices. And listeners of my show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash bob. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, a five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash bob to start shaving better today. All right, this is kind of personal, uh, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to talk personal. I've talked about a lot of things, things below my belt. Sometimes that's the safest stuff to talk about because people get offended around every corner, at least when I'm around. That's why I try to stay away from corners. There's something that people have a problem with and they're ashamed of is when they can't perform in bed. And a lot of times I do perform in bed. I have a mic, I'm set up, I do 10 minutes, but I'm actually talking about sex. And here's the deal. If you if you like sex, and and I think most of you do, you're going to love BlueChew.com. Here's the deal. BlueChew.com offers men a performance enhancement for the bedroom or the card table or a garden shed or the garage. It doesn't matter where. At BlueChew.com, you can get the first chewables. These are chewables. Do you understand? Not since eating Fred and Barney back in the day did we have chewables that did this with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So this is the same exact stuff, and they're chewables. So they even work faster. And BlueChew.com has affiliated physicians that work with you to find the dosage and active ingredient that's best for you. The chewables from BlueChew.com can be taken on a full or empty stomach. And you can have maybe a tiny stomach. Maybe you just had a plum or a raisin or a couple nuts. Speaking of a couple nuts, online physician consult is free. So it's cheaper than those other two. You know, the Viagra and Cialis. And not that I'm giving them a plug. But you can plug on anything. But... It only takes a few minutes to connect with a Bluetooth.com affiliated physician. And if you qualify, you get prescribed online quickly. I mean, really fast, because that's how it works. It's a dot com. It's a, you know, it's really, it's official. There's no in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversations, which I'm known for anyway. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. No one likes that, especially now. And it ships directly to your door in discreet packaging. It's not covered in like doll clothes. You know, it's not... (laughs) That doesn't sound appropriate at all. It's just plain packaging. It's discreet. And the chewables from BlueChew.com are made in the USA. That's right. We didn't farm out for this. These are made home. Homeward safe. You and your partner will love it. I know that because I know your partner. No, I don't. I've never met him or her. And I'm, I'm happy that you're together, even if it's just for a night. It doesn't matter. Just chew it and do it. I didn't write that line, but I believe in it. Here's a great deal for you guys. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use the promo code BOB, B-O-B. That's me. I'm a promo code for BlueChew.com, and you just pay the $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-Chew.com. Promo code is BOB, B-O-B. I've made it. So that's what you want to do. You go to bluechew.com and the promo code bob and you get them your first order is free and you just pay five dollars shipping and you'll be just you'll be getting up in the world you really will um i wish you the best bluechew.com i don't know if i mentioned it but uh go there and get it and then you'll thank me but don't do it personally hey it is uh it is i it is i your 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 father figure your friend your pal your uh your bro 
your, uh, your <laughs> I don't know what, your carnivore. I, I do eat meat sometimes, I'm sorry. But Bob Sackett's Here For You is the name of this podcast. Uh, or it's a show, this episode. I don't like calling it a podcast because I, I feel like it's a broadcast. So there you go. Anyway, uh, my guest today is Nikki Glazer, and I love her. I just love her. And she reminds me of myself, uh, not just because genetically I have uh, all the same body parts as, as a very uh, adorable woman, but uh, nah, why would I say that? But anyway, um, this is for a little bit older ears. So I think if you have if you're 14 but your ears are 60, that's fine. But I wouldn't want a 12 year old to listen to this. Or maybe maybe 10. What's the cutoff? Uh, well, that's when a doctor. No, uh, 12 or 13. I don't know what to tell you about mitzvah age. That just cut out a lot of the audience. Maybe 11 years old and older. Something like that. It gets a little graphic uh, because Nikki and I have a a like way of talking and thinking. And she's just adorable. So um, I'm just going to go right into this Zoom thing so it goes right onto the YouTube site so you can see us talking to each other. Here comes Nikki Glazer. Ah, there you are. This is, I like being able to see the person. I wasn't, I was doing all audio and now I'm like, I'm really enjoying being able to see people. It's different. I, 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 um, I can, I meet with my therapist and my psychiatrist in the same day. And one is just on the phone and one is face to face. And I always get more out of face to face. I agree. I I actually have a screensaver of my psychiatrist, so I just talk to the computer. You just look at that while you... Yeah, no matter who I talk to, I just tell them everything. And I tell them... The problem is I'll tell people that that I'm having trouble with them thinking they're the psychiatrist. Right, right. And I'll talk about them, you know, and it's just Thinking while you're staring at the picture of the psychiatrist, but it's, it's Stamos on the line. Well, Stamos actually hooked me up with my psychiatrist, which is really... Well, he tried for eight years to get me to go. <laughs> That's the truth. Wow. He said, I can't take you anymore. Please, please go to this guy. Yeah. Wait, you weren't going to a psychiatrist until like kind no, of recently? No, I went, I went years ago and okay. the person was recommended by another friend of mine who is no longer alive. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the psychiatrist had something to do with that. Uh, no, I'm just Are kidding. you serious? Um, oh. but, no, no, that's <laughs> a horrible thing be. to say. <laughs> it, it, that is true. Wow, that's actually like a Breaking Bad kind of show. There was a show called, that Hank Azaria did called Huff, where oh, yeah. he was a psychiatrist, and I actually guessed it on it. I played a sitcom star that did, it was a very serious part, and, and he didn't want to go back to work, and so he was just doing coke and pills and watching little people porn. And um, and that's I was naked. That's what this quarantine it. feels like. It, it, I don't do little it's people like, porn. But it's something weird. You're, you're, you're indulging in something that you're not proud of right now. We all are, you know? We all well, are little people porn. Now, your uh, parents, are they tall? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's, so I, just I am going to get, the other way, yeah. I just wanted to but get that off the, <laughs> off the table. That you're, not, you're not using your parents as, little, as a replacement for little people porn. <laughs> no, I haven't. I have our... Although our our bedrooms are like right above each other, and oh, I just no. wasn't when I lived here as a kid or as a teenager, even I wasn't sexual at all. Like I didn't masturbate. I didn't. There was nothing I was really hiding sexually in my room. It was just me in my room, just like I don't like thinking about like fantasizing about Dave Matthews, but not realizing that I was like turned on while it was happening. I was just like I just loved him so much, but not realizing right. it. But I never did anything about it. Um, and but you now, were into twenty minute solos, no matter what. Yeah, oh my god! I, and pop. I just, I well, were you, were I you a pop into, person? Were you? Were you? Back then, I mean, I started smoking pot in high school, but it wasn't. Um, and I still felt the same way that I feel about it now, which is like I get very excited before I get to do it, and then once I do it, I'm kind of like, why did I do this? And then I do more, and then I'm like, I'm doing it. So I just, it's, I constantly, have, I have the same relationship, but now. I used to like sneak smoking pot. Like I used to blow it out my bathroom. Um, I have a separate bathroom. I was like, had my own bathroom as a teenager, which was so cool. So me and my friends would go in there and blow it out the window. 
And now is I do that. Is that where you are now? Is that yeah, bathroom there I'm in, now? I'm at my same bathroom, but now I'm blowing smoke pot out the window because I'm doing like, as I'm doing my makeup for a zoom meeting and my mom just doesn't like it when I smoke it in the kitchen. So now she's like, she makes me go to the bathroom, knows I'm doing it in the bathroom um, and doesn't mind now. So like, it's still like when I was in high school, but, um, but very different too. And like, well, they, they're aware that it's part of the culture and, and then they don't look at it as you're not putting it in their food. Are you? Uh, yes, I am actually, because they, <laughs> they, I'm not doing it. They do it. They love it. So that's the thing. It, they dab, so. they'll have like a half a cookie and they'll split a cookie and then they'll just have more fun watching 90 day fiance that night. Whereas I like wake <laughs> up and I, I need it to like get through the day. Like that's kind of like it, 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 um, I, I I'm really relying on pot right now uh, to get. Is, through is your mom making more? This would be a dad joke. This is what I was known for that people oh, hated please. me for. But yes. is she making more pot roast than usual? <laughs> See that that would be a joke that I would be chastised for. It would be in the L.A. Times and call me a piece of garbage. And now <laughs> it only works if you say is she fucking making pot roast. Or, no, you know, it's so good. Yeah, you got to add the NF bomb where you got no humor anymore. Or, yeah. Well, we do pot clever. roast. Um, <laughs> I do them. I just smoke a lot of weed and then just hurl insults at them. So that's <laughs> that's the kind of pot roast I'm providing. Um, and you have a sister, right? You got. I do you, have a many, sister. Do you have any other siblings? No, nope, just a sister, and she lives here in St. Louis too. She has a husband and two kids, and I have barely even seen her. But um, but yeah, that's it's just me and my parents, like quarantined in the suburbs in a cul-de-sac in St. Louis for the past two months. Well, I'm glad my wife's here because I had a cul-de-sac for many years. Uh, <laughs> it was freezing. It was just, uh, and I I always wore airy stuff because I never wanted to get a yeast infection. So I would always, because right. if you wear mostly 80% polyester blend, you get a yeast infection. People don't know when they do yoga, you're going to get a UTI. There's no way not to. The, the, and that men get yeast infections. No, I meant with my vagina. Oh, right. Okay, you, right, have both. I always forget Yeah, yeah. That. No, I keep them there because so many people have told me to go fuck myself over the years. Right. <laughs> it's just easy to just. By the way, my guest is uh, Nikki Glaser. <laughs> <laughs> and this Bye, is Bob. Uh, this thing is uh, called Bob Saget's here for you. And I, I I didn't do it as a pandemic response. I did it as I a response know. to what a... how sad the world is. And I'm the only person left without a podcast. So I decided the neighbor kid, right. the UPS driver, they all have them. Yeah. Um, your show on Sirius is amazing. And I came in the Thank first you. time I did it, I was like a bloated puffer fish from the night before. And I think <laughs> I was I was like the, the guy in Deliverance that they find with the arm broken, Ronnie Cox, behind his head. Uh, I was a drama victim. I don't know but, that reference, but I like But it. yeah, Deliverance was a movie and they had the I remember, and 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 I just don't know the... Bloated. It's not a fun movie to yeah. watch, except it's, I recommend it for like 10-year-olds. It's really... <laughs> Yeah, like it's good. And once you're beyond that age, it kind of doesn't. Yeah, it's passe. But so, yeah. so uh, you must be, and I've been watching everything you've been doing and talking about it. And Bill Maher was saying it. You know, you'll be back. Don't worry. The road will oh, yeah. be there. And I look at your website and I see all the dates you had. And I had to reschedule all my dates. And I canceled on Canada. It was like an affront to the country. Oh, <laughs> so, really? But then the next day they had to close down all the a yeah, lot of places I, mean, I like, was going to go. So, but they I didn't, didn't feel bad canceling because everything's canceled. And, and it's not gonna, up to us. It, no, no. And, and it's, but what was interesting was here you are on this the rising ascension. Is that the dog or, or is that your yeah, mom? It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> is your mom stoned? Is she stoned and that's her reaction? <laughs> that's how she gets. Mom, keep it down. Go get your ball. Uh, yeah, it's their dogs. Their loud ass dogs. I had so what were you dog. saying? I'm just saying that you here you had and you know what that dog yeah, is. Yeah, I had uh, so many things. <laughs> you and I have a lot in common, even though you don't I maybe you don't know it, but we do because I kind of because you always you have this girl next door kind of thing. Uh huh. Not not like the movie The Girl Next Door, but you have this, you know, you're you're everybody's friend is what it feels like to Aww, me. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I like to be I feel like I'm pretty friendly and approachable. I try to be. Yeah. And you're real, which is, a, is more than refreshing, especially Thanks. when it comes to, dare I say the word, comedians. I don't even spell it. I just spell like, uh, yeah. I, men and women, I just call actors. I, I 
I, I right. don't say actresses because it. The you never have, or is this a new thing? I think I just started it just now. Yeah, just now. <laughs> well, you finally <laughs> caught up. Comedians. Yeah, the actor thing. Yeah, comedian always feels kind of just no one even knows how to say it because it's comedian e n n e. So in French, it's comedian, but people go comedian, and it's like that just sounds like a. <laughs> Like a Raggedy Ann doll that's like a woman dressed like Raggedy Ann. That's what it seems like to me. And she comes out and she's like, just does slapstick. So, um, right. I just, right. yeah, female comic. I'm fine with being like, yeah, I'm a comic with a vagina and that makes my comedy different than male comedian. I'm okay with that. Well, do, do you prefer com- comic or comedian? Cause comedian sounds comic a little more sounds cool. Like comics call each other comics. Um, right. that's a, that's a comic word. So when you call yourself a comic, like, that's like, oh, you're part of a cool club. Um, and then comedian is just what it is on my tax returns. I mean, that's just what my job is. But then I, I have all these en- other, not anymore though. What do you, what do you put on there? How, how do you file? What do you put on? The, what is your title? Well, you're a corporation I now, I, I assume. My, yeah, I, I've been incor- incorporated for a while, but. Um, I could see it. Your empire is behind you president. right now. It's a, it's it's amazing. That's your I whole built, empire. Oh, I've, uh, none of this is mine. Nah, that's it's is all that, my parents. A, I will inherit it though. Is that a window or a painting behind, or um, a poster of the? That's of, a poster of Cincinnati. My parents like celebrate Cincinnati because that's where we're from originally. The little blow up uh, scream um, guy from the painting, the scream, and then there's a um, a signed headshot of Don Knotts uh, from oh, uh, cool. Andy Griffith. Yeah, that my dad got when he was a kid because he met Don Knotts because my um, his uncle was Don Knotts's doctor. So <laughs> I would assume near the end. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was like, yeah, I think it was it like while he was, I don't know. I, my dad's going to tell me that I don't Don know. Knotts. He, he was, was the best. He was the best. Incredible comedic actor. Yeah. Yeah. The incredible Mr. Lippet was a movie that if people haven't seen it, they that's most people, but it was, mm, he was yeah, a fish. Was, he died and turned into a fish and it was an animated fish. Whoa. He looks like a fish. Yeah, Already. that's why they did it. He had that the lips, he had the voice. No, nope. yeah. there was no stretch except Oh, for wait, I lips. think I've seen that. He turns into an animated fish. I've seen like yeah. clips of that. And then the female lead is Daisy. It's like something I'd have in a dream. There was a it, movie with Don Knotts where he turns into a fish. I don't know. It's probably. It's a, they call it Passover ambient. now. <laughs> so What do you I, file at? Are you considering yourself, like you, comedian first, then actor, then podcaster i mean what are you well i'm a director i'm in direct, the middle of well, now yeah. getting a director thing going um right it's, it, and it's it's a snuff film which i think uh, it, this because of you know quarantine i think it'll draw a lot of attention you know yeah um they're and, just and, snuff films where they don't die from the sex it's like they die from covid during it's, the it, well actually i take uh people I can't do it. It's just too sad, so I can't. Mm. Do it. But it involved right. two tractors and someone with the disease. So okay, just, right. It's, but but no. But the answer is no. But what I love about you um, is that we have a wicked sense of humor. But the intention behind it isn't wicked. It's it's uh, you're a good person, just wanting to relate to people with things that you find funny. And I yeah. got, I I had a problem. I'll, let me back it up because I have many, <laughs> but. Um, here I was playing a wholesome guy for so many years and you've been doing stand up for a while, right? I mean, this is like yeah. a, how long? Yeah. 15 years. Right. Sorry to ask you the same questions everybody asks you, but I just, no, I'm actually no, they, rocking. they honestly don't. And well, I have to remember from them. What's wrong with them? So how, wh- how old were you at the first stand up appearance? 19. Okay. Is that yeah. what you told the judge? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think my first one was 18. And then, um, and then I really got into it around like 20. I see. I was 17 and I won a radio contest singing a song about bondage. What? <laughs> I know. It's really, I did music parodies and I did, which is always the highest form of comedy. And then I wrote comedy songs because I, I don't know, I, the serious ones I'd written weren't working. And so you then had I tried a, to write serious songs? I wrote 60 serious songs. I wrote a song when I was 15 called When I Was a Boy. <laughs> Wait a second. You're a <laughs> songwriter? Do you still write songs? Yeah, I do them in my stand-up uh, forever. Since I yeah, started stand-up. Yeah, but I mean like serious songs. Um, no, I don't write serious songs. But the comedy songs I write are getting better, I think, just because I've yeah. been doing it for so long, that 
they're um they really have a serious meaning to them yeah like, uh like the last special i did i closed with a song called we got to be kind to each other but in the middle of it it's you know it's got all yeah kind of yeah crazy shit in it no but, that's but like I, what what happens with your stand-up is like it starts out as jokes and then you find a way to convey what you actually want to say through the jokes because you get so good at them so that makes sense well that's sweet but that's but, but that's what you what i find similar i did a special uh about a hundred years ago, uh, in 2007 called that ain't right on HBO. And people were really mad at me. It did really yeah. well. It was R rated. And I was just, it was a lot of dick jokes. I said, fuck, like it was a rim shot, you know, it was just, and right. I like, performed at NYU at the Skirball theater. So it just, it, the audience was 20 and it still is sometimes for me. It, it, it varies. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm, I'm, I'm like a dad. I'm, I'm a bitch. I'm a, no, but I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm yeah. a I'm a dad or I'm your friend or I'm your whatever. But what you do is you're bringing in a lot of women that a lot of people aren't. Um, and you're, you're, you're identifying for me. It's, it's kind of an every woman type of, uh, subject matter, but it's also guys are relating to it because they're like, I think you must get some creepsters that are like turned on by what you're doing that you. Yeah. It, that does happen. I mean, there's, and the truth is like, I talk openly about sex on stage and like in a really, um, over the top way sometimes, not to shock or whatever, but just because that's like, I just think sex is so funny that we're not all talking about it, even though it's what we're all thinking about. So, and I just don't have a problem talking about it, but the truth is I'm very like, I'm not really a whore or like you could never, and, and if I were, I would like, properly admit it if I was like a slut and like slept around a lot I'm really like it's so you're difficult not for you're me. not you're not a whore no I gotta go I'm not um well okay well it was great talking <laughs> to great you talking to you take care when I you're gotta whore, get to work please I'll get call. back to you oh you oh, give me so the weekend. you are a whore give me the weekend and I can be one by Monday that'll be a four hour uh we'll, we'll do a whole <laughs> different kind of we'll do a zoom but we won't record it <laughs> I uh yeah oh I, I just I, I project a certain way on stage and then I think people feel like some dumb guys don't get it and then they come on to me and they're like uh, you could teach me some things like this kid in Australia wrote to me he's like I hope you like young guys I could learn a thing from you and I'm like I don't know anything I I'm terrible in bed I'm like a, a I'm I still feel <laughs> I'm really not good I just kind of lie there and accept it I'm and, sorry but that's reverse psychology if you're saying right now I'm terrible in bed. Some, I'm not terrible. But, I'm just not. Somebody's great. out there that's going to go, I'm going to make you great. You know, someone's, someone should. That's what I want. I want everyone to lower their expectations with me in bed because it is I, for anyone to think that I know what I'm doing in there just be, because I talk frankly about my experiences would be uh, a misrepresentation of myself. But yeah, I. Um, well, you're almost I like a newb newbie then. So you'd be a great project for someone. Yes. I mean, that's how you learn sexually is like you get like you become an apprentice to someone who knows more than you do. And then you kind of like that's can you how everything. Not, can you not say the apprentice, please? <laughs> <laughs> These are rough times. I'm sorry. Trigger <laughs> word. Um, you. Yeah, I just feel like that's how it happens anyway, is that you I would love to be someone's new project. I like my next relationship. I'm like, what is this person going to teach me? Cause the last one I learned this and, I, but I'm not teaching anything. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's not what a relationship is supposed to be anyway. Like I'm in the healthiest relationship I've ever been in. And I Kelly know. sends it her a love looks great on Instagram. I love that's, Kelly. That's all that matters. You can hate each other at home. And I, you know, and she puts the makeup on that covers the bruises, you know, right. But, uh, but we on look you. like we love each other. If people <laughs> says we do, everything's fine. You know, it really, it's, so much of that I, I just can I just can tell that there's like a love there and that you guys are enjoying your company at least that's what comes through to me on your Instagram so I'm like oh that does <laughs> look really nice like that's the only way I could judge it I don't hang out with you guys so from that I'm like there's there's something there's something really sweet there and I I look forward to the next quarantine with someone I, I love romantically that, that is one of the things that we're enjoying because there are times where i'm i'm kind of the douche um which is good because she appreciates that because we we haven't been ordering in a lot of douches so um, 
you know, I, I don't think that, that would be. <laughs> yeah, those be... are scarce. So, like, someone's got to do it. And it's nice I think that... they're probably very available. And what if that's the cure? What if that is it, you know? Oh, my God. Um, and then how will men do not get it? I guess an enema with a douche. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can douche your asshole. I forgot about that. They don't call them That's douches, actually the though. name of my new book. Is uh... <laughs> <laughs> And it's three books. It's three. It's 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 like uh, it's douching your asshole for dummies. It's a trilogy. <laughs> it's a trilogy. Uh, you're like the George R. R. Martin of douching your asshole. It's actually called The Rings. Um, <laughs> but but what I what I love is I mean I I I watched banging a couple times and I went uh, it felt like when I did my that ain't right how. Yeah. For me, it was different because um, I was the, the, the dad on the show and the video guy and in people's living rooms, so they take it very personally. And I had people really mad at me, like, why did you like, do this? But, weren't, but I remember that, Bob. I remember when all of a sudden Bob Saget was like, you, you took him down from his throne. Like, and you were that to me. I was a child when you were wholesome and, like, that's all I knew of you. And, like, you were so... I had so many um, ideas of who you were. And so when you came out as this like dirty comic, I wasn't angry about it. I think everyone was like very tickled. I mean, wasn't that a, uh, as much, I'm sure you saw hate, but wasn't the overall thought like, this is so exciting and, and funny and cooler eventually, than it would be if it wasn't? Eventually, but I was like that before, but I wasn't as, I didn't drop F-bombs as much, you know? I wouldn't just, but I was... Were you Literally. trying to, to do that? I didn't try to do anything. It was my reaction. It wasn't shock value. Well, there's no plan. I mean, is there yeah. a plan? Do you go, oh, this is what my next uh, new no. hour is going to be. It's going to, what you do on stage is kind of, I mean, all of Just us Just where you're changed. at in that moment, yeah. I mean, we're all going to have COVID material. I mean, or there's no way to avoid it because what yeah. other circumstance are you living with your parents again? Right. And what, how many people could split up? during this time or get people are getting divorced or people are get, having babies or people Oh, it's going to be so interesting to see. It's going to be great. All the moms and sons that have kids. What do you, you mean? Know, with the sons living with his mom. And that's oh, what I mean. yeah, yeah, see, that's yeah. the kind of stuff that when it gets confusing, when I say that, that's when people get upset. That's when, oh, right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. I'm talking about people in the Appalachians, you know, people that are, you know, just in the, in the backwoods. Um, you know, yeah. The, the the quarantines. They didn't believe in the quarantine, but they didn't mind it. You know, cause right? They got, oh, right. Because they get to. I see what you're saying. Like moving. I should in have with, stopped this about four minutes ago. I no, I'm bad. glad that I'm on board with it now. So, like, if 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 I were a different kind of lady, moving in with mom and dad might be pretty advantageous for my uh, my Especially sex life. If you're, if you're saying stone. if I was from West Virginia, right? And stone. And stone. Um, <laughs> okay, now I'm following the logic. Yeah, the and logic I can't is disagree with it's, you. And it's it's an aristocrat's kind of logic, and it's not. <laughs> it really is. It yeah, really is. I feel I bad. I feel that. bad now. But, but, <laughs> no, but, but, but how I do love you... incestual. Like all of my jokes, and in my de like my first joke I ever told was, um, you know, I re when I was really young, I found my dad's stash of porn, and I like, you know, I was eight years old, just and I was so confused, like where did he get all these naked pictures of me? And so all of my jokes have always been about my dad, like molesting me. And he did right. it. You know, I have like, I have the great, I have a Danny Tanner for sure of a dad. And, right. um, and, but all of it, like, you know, I take quick showers because my dad used to, um, make be like really annoying about the hot water. And also he watched us and like, just had like jokes like that, like continually about my dad being uh, a perp. So I really like that line of thinking. I tend to go there. My poor dad has to like sign off. When I was on Last Comic Standing, that joke about finding porn was on Last Comic Standing. And I was like 20. I mean, I was just my first TV thing. And my dad had to like sign uh, uh, sign something for NBC saying he wouldn't sue and that for that joke. So he had to like <laughs> sign and be like, I had naked pictures of my daughter pretty much. He's so proud. I've had to go through with my kids about a lot of things. And I did uh, one thing on a special about my middle daughter who's uh, 30. Who's They're all adorable. And women um and i did something about it. i was doing her laundry and her thong was an eye patch and <laughs> yeah. you could have flossed with it and she was like daddy oh my god i got so much shit for that and 
She, and then I talk like that about her. And yeah, I said, she yeah. doesn't care about anything. All she cares about is her cell cycle. Oh, my God, Verizon. Oh, my God. And I turned her into a beast of some kind. Yeah. Like, and and I, I shouldn't have mentioned it now because it still pisses her off. I'm, was, I'm sure. I mean, that to be the daughter of a stand-up comedian and have you being impersonated by your dad would oh, be it's, insane. It's so and painful. I, it was. I really felt that in that moment. I've never honestly like given much empathy to my parents because I do impressions of my mom and um Me and make fun of them constantly and it's like that's that's I was just talking to someone I was talking to Elon Gold last night about his impression of um Howard Stern and he said that early on he would go he does an amazing Howard Stern and he would go on the Stern show and Stern loved it and then as he got better at it it became more nuanced and Stern began began to like hate it because he was like seeing too much of himself that he didn't like. And I was thinking about it. I was like, Oh, I would. And then Elon didn't get asked to go back on the show because it would trip him out. It would trip Howard out too much. And I could, I could see that. Like if someone was doing you and you're just like, Oh God, like it would be hard. It would be hard to handle. Has anyone ever done an impression of you? Have you ever? A lot, a lot. I was done on South Park. Jim Carrey did me on Unliving Color and Jim's a friend. I've known yeah. Jim since he was 17, and he just made, hi, I'm Bob Saget, you know. And he did the oh, video wow. show, they had the set, and at the very end, his head his head explodes. <laughs> so, oh, my God. And he's my friend, and I'm going, is he my friend? And But he is. So, yes. you know, uh, but, yes. but South Park, they were, uh, I did stand-up about it. It's, it's an honor, and Family Guy's done it, you know, and, and Homer Simpson, I'm his favorite comedian, so... <laughs> Oh my it's, God! It's not that good. It's it is it's an honor and and it's frightening. And then they tell me yeah. I'm Bo, Bojack Horseman is based on me, but then I I, I <laughs> no, but then I find out that it that it's not because because I found out. So I mean, I, okay. I, got, I got I got concerned. I was like, what? Down and yeah. Out Horse used to be on a sitcom, family sitcom well, about like, family. Yeah, yeah. But that's there's a lot of people I mean, that did that. But if, yeah. okay, it was me. But um. <laughs> It was you, but that was like no, you actually, went the worst way you could go. Exactly, I but I didn't do it purposely. I did it because I wanted to make people laugh, and I, I'm basically like a nine year old that knows a lot of stuff, you know. Or yes. now I'm sixteen, I guess. In in the tenor of why my audience is younger, because or why I've got these misogynistic guys yelling out shit because of entourage or whatever. Oh right, right. Different generations of people, but I'm also. Got a huge female 22-year-old base here or something. It's awesome. And you should because you're, we're in good hands with you. And, and your dirty humor, if people get upset that you, of, of your jokes or my jokes, and I feel, I see what you're saying. It's like, at the, at the core of it, it's not to hurt anyone ever. And you know that. So don't get mad. Like, let's just, it's, yeah, it, it makes sense why you have a, a younger demo i mean they trust you i i really was not upset when i learned that danny tanner says fuck a lot i was like yes i mean there had to have been times on full house that you said something and you're like there's something there and you wrote it down like ever how do you write material is that how you do it you say because you are you talk in punchlines like talking with you i've said this before but like i love running into you because i walk away it, you're like an antidepressant for me because you make me laugh <laughs> in such a way that it, um, it's the same. It's when I laugh really hard. It's the same as orgasms for me. I feel good after it. I feel like I can do anything because it's like the same thing. But you make me have these like throw back my head laughing moments over and over. That's and so sweet. Thank you. It's true, but like, and so many of those times I could be like, write that down, write that down, write that down. Do you? Is that how you generate it, material? I People roll, I you roll it. On, uh, it's on. It's on the phone. I just do. I just. Yeah. Uh, I just note it. Everything gets noted. If something's but like, funny, that would the be worst exhausting is, hanging out with you because you would do, have to note things all the time. Like, do you, but I'm do pretty you, serious too. I mean, right now I'm feeling the weight of the world, so right. I'm feeling the pain of so many people. Um, I know. And and on that happy note, we'll be right back. All right, this is kind of personal, uh, and I'm I'm not ashamed to talk personal. I've talked about a lot of things, things below my belt. Sometimes that's the safest stuff to talk about because people get offended around every corner, at least when I'm around. That's why I try to stay away from corners. 
There's something that people have a problem with and they're ashamed of is when they can't perform in bed. And a lot of times I do perform in bed. I have a mic, I'm set up, I do 10 minutes, but I'm actually talking about sex. And here's the deal. If you, if you like sex, and, and I think most of you do, you're going to love BlueChew.com. Here's the deal. BlueChew.com offers men a performance enhancement for the bedroom or the card table or a garden shed or the garage. It doesn't matter where. At BlueChew.com, you can get the first chewables. These are chewables. Do you understand? Not since eating Fred and Barney back in the day did we have chewables that did this with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So this is the same exact stuff, and they're chewables. So they even work faster. And BlueChew.com has affiliated physicians that work with you to find the dosage and active ingredient that's best for you. The chewables from BlueChew.com can be taken on a full or empty stomach. And you can have maybe a tiny stomach. Maybe you just had a plum or a raisin or a couple nuts. Speaking of a couple nuts, online physician consult is free. So it's cheaper than those other two. You know, the Viagra and Cialis. And not that I'm giving them a plug, but you can plug on anything. But it only takes a few minutes to connect with a BlueChew.com affiliated physician. And if you qualify, you get prescribed online quickly. I mean, really fast, because that's how it works. It's a dot .com. It's a, you know, it's really, it's official. There's no in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversations, which I'm known for anyway, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. No one likes that, especially now. And it ships directly to your door in discreet packaging. It's not covered in, like, doll clothes. You know, it's not, <laughs> that doesn't sound appropriate at all. It's just plain packaging. It's discreet. And the chewables from BlueChew.com are made in the USA. That's right. We didn't farm out for this. These are made home, homeward safe. You and your partner will love it. I know that because I know your partner. No, I don't. I've never met him uh, or her, and I'm, I'm happy that you're together, even if it's just for a night. It doesn't matter. Just chew it and do it. I didn't write that line, but I believe in it. Here's a great deal for you guys. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use the promo code BOB. B-O-B, that's me. I'm a promo code for BlueChew.com, and you just pay the $5 shipping. That's blue com. Promo code is Bob, B-O-B. I've made it. So that's what you want to do. You go to BlueChew.com and the promo code Bob, and you get them, your first order is free, and you just pay $5 shipping. And you'll be, just, you'll be getting up in the world. You really will. Um, I wish you the best. BlueChew.com, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but uh, go there and get it, and then you'll thank me, but don't do it personally. Okay, we're back, and um, that's why I love podcasts, because you could say, uh, we'll be right back, and then you really are back. I mean, there's no awkward lag in the, while you do a commercial. Uh, that's the problem with radio, is you're like on radio, and then you're like, we'll be right back, and then... You just have to like kind of look at each other while the commercial runs and kind of like pause the energy. And it just feels so fake. It's easier to just keep it going. But that's why I was saying I like conversations better because it's been seamless. It's all the same. Well, I like that you say that I'm like an antidepressant because afterward you feel better. That would mean that I could help a lot of people if they swallowed me. Yeah, I would tell Kelly that, that it'd be good for her. I actually mentioned it to her last night and she's not depressed. Okay. Well, but we need to get be. her depressed. Yeah, after. I, gotta, I can bum her out right after we're done talking. I'll, okay. I'll get there. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I do, I, I'm not a great, I mean, I was divorced 23 years ago and then mm-hmm. had uh, dated, had other uh, girlfriends and um, they didn't, they, you know, some of them didn't work out and that's why, you know, I buried them in the yard. But um, right. see, I say stuff, you say stuff, but there's really no ill intent. Whereas other people that would yeah. ju- judge us, like Bill Cosby used to judge me for being dirty, uh, but, look, look, but look how, how he conducted his... How good did that his... feel? I mean, not good, but well, like... Uh, but, but, but look how... what I would never do the stuff that I would say. Like you would saying that you would always have material about your dad doing stuff to you. Yeah. I, I, my mother would say, Bobby, could you please stop saying that I wear a Viking helmet and tit plates? Could you please stop <laughs> saying that? Because it's so obscure. I mean, why would I say that about my mother? It's too, it's too specific. She must have done it. And I right. said, I, I can't, Mom. The people laugh. 
<laughs> yeah. No, I've done that before too, where I'm like, I, I convince my parents why it's funny and that it's not really about them. And then my mom goes, okay, I just needed to hear that. I just needed to hear that that's not from a real place. We well, have smart I, parents. So they, they both they, went to college yeah. and stuff, right? No, no, they didn't. Neither of them. But they're mine, smart people. Mine didn't. Um, yeah. My, my, my dad was a depression kid, so he had to raise everybody. Not depression oh, yeah. like, like Zoloft, but depression. Right. Like, you know. Not like your wife later depression. No, the great one. The great depression. Yeah, yeah. That this one. The, We're getting the, into another one, though. That's because we have the great virus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is that what they called it? The awesome That's so virus. Funny. It was like 1918 was the last pandemic, and then the Great Depression. It's like we're we're due. We're 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 overdue. We're we're I don't know what's we, dust bowl. We, we got Is one of deliver. those coming again. I found out I don't have. I have never had the virus. I got a test. I got like the real one. I, I whoa I with the I'm, thing down your nose. No, I got the uh, a blood test. That's brand new. Um, oh that's wow! A, it's a real one. It's a good one. Yeah, and my big terrible d- dad joke, and this is what these. This is why I turned to dirty. I think. Uh, yeah. You know, all they talk about is antibodies. What about Uncle Body? Doesn't he feel bad? That he's not getting <laughs> all that is is Groucho. That's all that is. You know. That's a good one. But I, parents, I love that. But the most brilliant comedians that I have always loved, and you'll watch Chris Rock, and you'll watch Chappelle, and there's a pun. There, there are puns. Oh and yeah. They're, they're, it's wordsmithing, and that's. You know, what I get chastised for, and I guess that was why I turned out to start with more of an R-rated, it wasn't even dirty. When they would say I was filthy or stuff, I would go, take that, that would be on the ad. You know yeah, what I'm on I the know, ad they pr- start to promote you like that, and I just, because I, when I get promoted as like a sex comedian, I'm just like, I'm not talking about sex tonight at all, or like raunchy, or like, they can't handle you, like, I, I just hate that uh, getting... It's just what I want to talk about. I'm, I'm not doing this on purpose. To, exactly. You're not, you're not doing it on purpose. It's not like your shtick. No, it's us. That That's yes. my point. That's what we yes. share. But uh, we, com- but yes, you're right. But people think we're doing it on purpose to like get some sort of reaction, which, yeah, I mean, I guess it gets a reaction. You can't deny that. But it, it's not, it's, it wasn't in, in, intended to do so. Right. It's just the way we are. Yeah. And, and people like right now I'm kind of, trying to figure out what to do next with my career. My show at Sirius is ending and I'm like, Oh, what do I want to do next? I love radio and, and I love. Oh, you're the great idea at of like, it. Thank you. I, it's just so fucking easy and fun. It's, it's just, Are, were, I like ha, it a lot. Has the serious thing been exhausting? Is that kind of one of the things? That no, makes... it's, 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 it honestly is like something I look forward to every day. It's just, it really is my time I can make more money doing other things with my time it's just even though I love it and then you go do I do something I love for less money than you know and do something you like a little bit less for more I'm I'm, I want to be able to afford a really good bunker uh, uh, someday so I'm kind of like money focused right now with my career which they always say never just go after the money and I'm like we don't have much time I gotta get some money um but so you really thinking, are serious about this prostitution thing. You that was just a joke oh yeah. at first, but you're seriously going to do that. Um, you know, if the money is right, uh, let's talk. You and know, as long would, as they know, you're just going to lay there. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm not going to bring anything to the table. I just I want people to know what you're going to get with me. Um, oh, which but is there's going to be a table. table. There's going to no, be a well. T- I'll 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 be resembling a table. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like my my I uh yeah my favorite sex move is the the table it's Kama Sutra um but yeah I I'm thinking about being oh being on like network tv or even terrestrial radio like I've been thinking about maybe pursuing you know having a radio show a morning radio show maybe manifesting that and um I've had people say ge- they're genuinely concerned because I am so raunchy and I'm like that's, I, I can fucking rein it in. Pardon they my. Don't, they friend. don't. They don't understand. First thing, you're intelligent. You're. Yes. You're smart. You're direct. You're getting past. So many people that do comedy are sweaty, and they're working so hard at it, and they do really well. They wind up doing some movies, and we know who they are that are just mm-hmm. on stage, and they're just trying to crush, and they're real competitive, 
and they're just trying to be like, I'm going to be a star. And you could see it's in their eyes. It's like a glaze of. And they get there because that's what it takes sometimes. It's for them. For them. Yes. And I know how to kill, so I can. And if I'm doing something uh, large in scope, that's my job. I have to give them the best show, and I have to do amazing. Yes, I can play in the middle, but freedom of speech is something. I think that's one of the reasons why I do go into whatever you would call R-rated territory. I mean, it just, it's freedom of speech. Why, why yes. the fuck can't I talk about my penis if there's a lot of comedy to be had there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's you, what you're and you doing. really get to do anything you want. When someone hires you to do your stand up, there's no like talk about this, don't talk about it. It truly is your chance to talk about whatever you want. But if I were to go you on to be, like a. You will be doing a, a network. There, that's what people will say to me when I'm on a show, like we did to tell the truth together. And yeah. And we got to hang out. And that's like. Yeah. Don't curse. And I'm the last one to curse. It's it's yeah. so funny because I've done some, for God's sakes, I did eight years of America's Funniest Home videos. There were no videos that everybody's posting. I was the only thing. There was no internet. Yep. So, I mean, I didn't curse. I wanted to, but I would say things like, Here's some, here comes some clips spewing into your face. And so yeah. that would be on the air, but nobody heard it because I smiled and I looked like the kid you wanted to hate from school. Yeah. So, and why does he have two jobs, that fucker? But you, <laughs> but you, but you have everything. Yeah, I can go on a morning skills. news show and not say blowjob, but people really are like, <gasps> like I did. You know, sometimes I've been in. I probably two times in my career I've done a radio show and they've had to hit the dump button because I accidentally say shit or something. But generally, well, that's, I'm a very that's dump. I mean, I don't know why you kids. You, it's only for shit humor. They hit the dump button. There's yeah, a fuck but there's a fuck button if you say fuck, but there's a dump button and there's right. a piss button and there's a nipples button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the motherfucker button. That one's big. I've never um, done that, by the way. I was just kidding about that. My mom and I never but she did love me a lot. And in hospice she made it pretty clear, so I had to get out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's where she was trying to get it in. You know, on her way out, you know, she thought she'd get her way in. But um <laughs> But she did, she She's went quietly. She was the first time she ever went quietly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you 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 can do anything you want. When the you nurse to, said, "Do you want some time alone?" Were you like, "Please, no." <laughs> no, I wanted her there to videotape, so I'd have something to show my children. <laughs> this is your dad and grandma. I don't know why they came up with. We want to be called grandma and grandpa. I said, "Well, okay." Get, oh, get that's the, cute. Get in the oven, Hansel. <laughs> <laughs> Who calls your kid Hansel, by the way? Yeah, it's a bad one. I don't well, think maybe any... we should bring it back. I think so. I would love to have a little German child or Swedish or <laughs> Swiss. <laughs> Someone needs to name their son Hansel, please. Or Gretel. Gretel's a good one. It sounds like Gretel I could see happening. That sounds like a cool like an indie director. Sounds like a barbecue breakfast or something. <laughs> Yeah. You want some Gretel on the side of your grits? So no, now, I'm full. I had a lot so of hands <laughs> My hands are full. Um, <laughs> it, it's weird that I think this time, and, and Bill Maher said it to you on the show, on his show, that it's like, he said, don't worry, it's going to come back. Because you, uh, you are on an ascension of all of a sudden, you know, banging was like the biggest special that everybody was talking about. You come out with blowjob and mm -hmm. then it's, it's kind of quiet and then they're in it's kind of mm -hmm. how Chappelle opened his special with like this is your fault um except, yeah except the blowjob is a little bit lighter <laughs> than telling everyone it's their fault <laughs> yeah 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 and he's not wrong and and neither are you and that's what I love about stand-up but it's the command it, something from stand-up allows you to do anything um and you could host anything you could be on anything my question is do you love acting is that something you love i really haven't been given a chance to fall in love with it i don't think i um i have a show that's coming out on quibi like that i'm writing right now that i'm starring in so i'll get to do that and i'm essentially playing myself in it so it's interesting to me it just the thing i don't like about acting is it takes a lot of energy you have to memorize it's lines huge. 
Oh, you have huge. to blocking. You have to rehearse. Then you have to second guess and, 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 and nail it in the moment. There's the immense pressure of like the live performance of it because you do have a limited, like there's a lot. And then there's also a lot of waiting around on set and feeling right. like I could be doing something else. I could be hanging out with people. It's just the times I've acted, I'm like, I don't think this is the most enjoyable thing I could be doing as a performer. Well, you might have something offered your way that it happens. Because what happens is when the writing's really, really good, and um, it was very hard for me sometimes in sitcom world to uh, learn the material, but I never really... Memorizing is, is really hard. And if something's not great... Um, I don't memorize. I Once I understand what it is, like I've been on Broadway doing, uh, I was in Drowsy Chaperone and the guy had, you know, Bob Martin originated, but it was like huge amounts of, you know, 60 pages of dialogue out of an 80 page God. script. And it was so well written that it was just, and there was also riffing ability within it. Uh, in, as long as you're not hurting someone's cue, except for that time I was on NyQuil. But, um, <laughs> is that true but it's like it's not memorizing it's something where it just embodies you so i think you'd be actually great at it if the right person you know yeah. grabbed you and you and you worked with judd apatow right yeah i was in train wreck and um and then i did i've been in all of amy's a lot of amy's movies she put me it was nice enough to put me in and she made it very clear to me, like, you got this because you're good at acting. You didn't get this because you're my friend. So I, I know I'm good. I know I'm capable of doing it. It just, um, I'm not a good auditioner, so I don't book anything. Oh, I'm so a I've horrible never... audit. I can't, I'm not even, forget it. It's, I'm forgettable I, as soon I, as I, I walk in the room. finally how to do it because I've been doing it for so long. I finally, after well, I mean, yeah, 40 like, years, I figured out That's finally. ridiculous. Then I that's a, a broken re- system. Well, it, it depends on who the people are. you should be able to be are. great in an audition. Th- but there's an a, there are a players out there. There was a movie that Richard Pryor did called Critical Condition, and Margie Simpkin, who's since my friend, anybody that ever hires me is my friend because you know it's not like a, yeah, same a vast world of people that have hired me uh, all the time. And Margie uh, had me uh, read, and I remember she wasn't wearing shoes, and she was complaining about um, different things. I think I'd read for her. I think she cast Top Gun. I'd read for Goose, if I'm remembering correctly, and I had a good, uh, a good audition, but I wasn't right for the part. Uh, Anthony Edwards w- was, um, and I had a couple good meetings with Barry Levinson for Diner, and it was Daniel Stern's part. Uh, but, but like uh, this movie, Critical Condition, the director was Michael Apted. It was a Paramount movie, and I got the part. And then they needed some funny scenes, and my old friend Chris Thompson was the guy that wrote them. It was really weird. And I got to be with Richard for, you know, wow. like a, month, a month in High Point, North Carolina, making this oh movie. Oh, my God. And so what year? But that was on an audition because it just I was just in the zone and she was kind enough and smart enough to to see, OK, we'll try it again. Or It's when they tell you to try it again and try a whole different thing that, you know, oh, I don't have this. Why are you getting me to try it again? But no, that's a good sign, though. Well, can you take I, the a note? Worst can you is take when a note? They tell you, they go, "Got it," and you're just like, "Oh God, there's just no way that that, that means a, if you just do it once, there's no way that anyone's getting it." When and I was that's like usually 20, what I get. I just get so nervous. Yeah, I was 23. I was went into wow. an office. I went into an office. Uh, oh, when you, when per- you got what was the Richard Pryor movie? How old? Oh, that was 26 when I got that Critical that's- Condition. Crazy. Okay, so 1986, and then because uh, I'm 140, and and mm. I went in, <laughs> and the casting director was a famous one. She cast a lot of the, lot of big shows. Like all, I'm trying to remember what shows, but huge shows. It wasn't all in the family, but it was like because Norman wouldn't have had Norman Lear would not have had a person like this uh, work for him. But she was well known, and while I'm auditioning, reading the sides, she's on the phone. Taking taking calls, talking, and 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 uh, I said no, I'll I'll wait. She said no, no, keep going. Uh, right, uh huh, uh huh. And I'm just standing. Oh there. my god! I'm standing there reading dialogue, and it's like I should have just walked out. I I didn't know. Right, you of know, we, you didn't we're know. like we're all. Victims. I don't even know that I'd walk out now. I or you know, there's we we just want to be we want jobs so badly and you, you, in that environment you're just like i'm just not myself in an audition i would do anything they told me in there that's but why all those, you have to the, do is apply this 
you have to just apply. The, uh, it's the same thing. And the question is, when the part's right, it's just right. And, I know. Uh, and I was told to there, there was be. a Stop Scorsese thing, and I was Ellen. Uh, they put me on on tape for this thing, and they said, "No, don't schedule anything for a couple months. Uh, this is looking really good." And it turned out to be vinyl, and it was. And Ray Romano got it, and I'm like, mm -hmm. because I've been around, I was like, good. I mean, he's perfect for this. Yeah, I mean, I, definitely, I could have done it. And and Martin really uh, wrote me a letter. Uh, wow. And said, you were so good, and we had a mutual friend, Brad Gray, because Brad did a lot of his movies over at Paramount. And um, so I, and Brad said, why didn't you tell me to? I would have talked to Marty. I said, no, I just want to. I want yeah, yeah. if I'm going to be in a Martin Scorsese movie, I want to do it because Martin. Turn it the right way. Right. Yeah. So but he um, wrote you a note. That's so wrote nice. me a really nice note, and then I Jesus. sent him a copy of my book, Dirty Daddy, and I said, uh, Martin, in, um, in, in case you want to know anything else about me, <laughs> it's in here. Uh, and then he wrote me a thank you for the book. What? He's a, he's just a he's a voracious writer. So and, nice. You know, he's, he's, he, yeah. It was you know. It's really sweet, and and I. Do love you do it. stuff like that? Are you good about like writing thank yous and writing? I need back to get and... better at it because the people I mean, that, that I respect really the most, I I've and Norman Lear has done it for me. I, I lost a friend very. It was Brad. I lost a friend, and he wrote a letter to me, um, because it is the most precious of all things because you have it forever. Um, yeah. Don Don Rickles always write wrote notes. I think yeah. Writes notes. Howard Stern writes notes, and it's like those. And having those and uh, it means so much. I got to start doing it. I think it's really, it's so special when you get it and you're like, oh my gosh. But then I generally just make it about me and I'm like, I don't do this. I need to be doing this more. And then it makes me feel sad ultimately well, when people I write me I think it's nice really things. about having to get the stationary. Let's admit it. You have to get a good thick bond and choose yep. the right type font. So you put your initials on it. And then am I locking into not getting married? I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Do I have to register at Crate yeah. and Barrel? I have to get like one of those little wax things that you drip and then you stamp. And it's just like, it's a lot. of. <laughs> I, you can't go to Michael's right now. So, so you know what? I don't need to thank people. <laughs> so do you do you live with Mozart? I mean, with a wax thing that you stamp? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You're that's how you it? That's how you send thank you letters. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm going to start doing it, I'm going to go big. I'm just not. It's either nothing or everything. I can't get like, I'm even bad about corresponding via text and like reaching out to people and being like, how are you during this? I feel like that's my next goal for the next couple of weeks of this quarantine is to reach out to friends. I haven't re reached out to and be like, how are you? Do you want to talk? Because I don't know. That, well, the only problem that? with that is, and I think people have found this when you do that, it's because you're in a moment of emotion and yeah. you're thinking about other people. And then you text like five people. And then all of a sudden five people start texting you back. And you have to answer yes. them. And then you're like, oh, no. Now I have five different people I have to talk to. And, yes. And um, so, but and, but you care about them. More. You did it because you care. But not this much. Not, uh, no. Not, then you block And them. really, I was only doing it because <laughs> I was feeling anxious. And I wanted you to ask me how I'm doing. And I wanted to tell you what's going on in my life. Right. So now and, I've got to listen to five people's problems. When really, I just wanted to tell one person mine. Or someone sends you a text and all of your cousins are on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have uh, so many of those group texts where it's like you'll go to your phone and you have 65 missed texts. And it's right. a conversation you have to like go back and keep up. You have to like now keeping up with, you know, group texts is like watching a series of a show. You're like, I got to go back because I don't understand. If you read the first, the last two pages, you're not going to understand it because you haven't read the first six pages. And sometimes you're in a different time zone, so everybody's done everything. And then I wake up to this giant sea. Yes, of, and everyone has started working. And they all and they all made a decision. And, and I'm like, yep. I just send the emoticon where my eyes are just staring straight ahead because yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great one. That just is one of my faves. That and the crazy face. I like that one with the guys kind that. of them. Yeah, that's kind yeah, of that a bad. Good. That's a bad face. I mean, that's not a nice. I mean, thing. that is kind of sexual. It's sexual, or it's uh, Lenny Mice and Men. I mean, it's kind of... Oh, it could go that way, too. It could go into a, a special Ooh, area. I've never thought about it, that, that there was like a special needs emoji, but that might be the one. Well, they took away 
all of the ones that had different uh, races. There were, they, they used, did? They were used to be, uh, uh, yes, unless you can turn them into them. I'm not trying to look for it, but there were Chinese right. ones. Right, well, people were, used to, let me just check this real quick. While yeah, you do that, while you do that, you keep checking. We're going to take one more last break here. Here's here's one more break. Okay, I don't know about you, and I'm going to leave it at that. I just don't know about you, but I know about me, and I know that there are times where I don't shave. And um, in this world we're living in right now, sometimes I'll put a mask on and I'll go outside or I'll go somewhere. And it's not that easy all the time when you've got a beard that's a bit out of control and maybe it's a little craggly and, and coming up in places you don't like. And maybe you'd like to groom it up a little bit and make your face look a little better. Maybe you got a hairy neck. There's all kinds of stuff. Maybe you got hair all over your face. Maybe you're a Sasquatch. Well, times are tough right now for everybody, even if you live in the woods. But Harry's has your grooming needs covered with high quality blades as low as $2 each. That is cheap. Delivered straight to your doorstep. Why look like a Wookiee? Why not look nice? You know, is that a mustache? What is that, a soul patch? You know, you can't define what it is if it's just growing in blotches. You go to Harry's, and their razors help you look your best. And you don't understand what I'm saying, because I didn't understand until I saw the product and understood what these blades were about. You can get a Harry's trial set delivered to your doorstep right now. You hear me right now by going to harrys.com slash Bob. I love that it's slash Bob. I just don't want it done to me because I don't want to slash Bob. I want to use a Harry's razor, which knows exactly what it's doing. It's I'll tell you all about it because it does things that other razors don't do. And it's all about the blade, right? Harry's is a return to the essential quality, durable blades that, well, some of us don't have anymore. And it's at a fair price. That's what's so different. It's just $2 per blade. That's right. You heard right. I know you're you're doing a double take. Your eyes are popping out like Roger Rabbit. $2 a blade. They cut out the middleman manufacturing blades in their German blade factory that's been honing precision blades for a century. We're talking 100 years of blades that they have perfected, which means you get incredibly high-quality blades at factory direct prices. And Harry's is super convenient because blade refills are delivered directly to your door on your schedule, with or without a subscription. And it can be your door. They deliver it to your door. You can shave your door. What if your door is hairy and you want to like clean your door up and give it a soul patch right under the knocker? In this challenging time that we're all living through, feel a little better about your purchase. This is nice. 1% of proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations devoted to helping provide access to better health care for men and for veterans. And listeners of my show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash bob. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, a five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash bob to start shaving better today. All right, so uh, no, what do you got there's there? still do, people. There's still people of color on emojis. And people are wearing, uh, anybody wearing a burqa? Do you have that? Oh, no, that, that one's not on here. There's not someone with like a, um, Remember years like ago, a the rice bee- patty hat. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty egregious. Um, what about the beekeeper lady? Remember her? She, she'd been, uh, a bear had oh, mauled yeah. her. <laughs> Wait, That's- what? Beekeeper lady? Years ago, I think it was, I don't know, it might be 10 years ago, some poor lady was mauled by a bear and she would go on TV and talk about it and she wore a beekeeper hat. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, it was But like I a do male. remember a woman whose face was ripped off by a chimp was like on, um, was on Oprah and like horribly disfigured. And Why don't I don't remember people, the beekeeper. It's so horrific. And you look at Tiger King and you go like, okay, there's more animals in captivity. And it's like, okay. Then in the so- wild... So it's over. So it's pretty much over. So in 100 years, it's just they're gone. I mean, that's it. Yeah, they're just living in in Florida in people's backyard. Right. Did you see that thing? And everybody's like sending the stuff out that I used to do for a living. But it's like an alligator walking across the highway. That just came out like recently. Really? Just walking in Florida, just looking for somebody to eat, I guess. 
Yeah, just looking for a just anywhere to go, a gas station um, that's still open. <laughs> a shoe store. You know, store. everything shut down. What's it? What's the, Where's a gator gonna go? Yeah, no, a gator's not going near a shoe store. It's it. That's where it's gonna turn into. You know what? A lot of gators cousins. You know, a lot of gators are dying. You know of what? What? Uh, what? Gator AIDS. It's really a horrible. <laughs> And they're so thirsty, so they have no choice but to oh, try right. to save themselves. Right. They have to drink the, the oh, so the Gatorade, Gatorade gives Gators aid. I think so. That and another Gator mounting them who has AIDS. Okay, but it has to be simultaneous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it could get it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um. <laughs> Yeah, any kind of animal thing bums me out so much I can't even stand it. But uh, the the Tiger what about, King. You, I was, what about people that you that that always talk about animal injustice, which I'm equally offended by. But then when it comes to human rights, they kind of are more silent. They make animals. You can only advocate for so many things, but I think yeah, I think we, we're in a position where we kind of have to advocate for everything. Um, right. I, I I'm sorry. Are you are you ta- is, are you in the middle? Do you have to go somewhere or because you, you're on no. your did something happen? No, I was did just you get wa- ta- winding. I was just playing with my hands as I was listening to you. I'm I was, sorry. Ta- I, was, I was I was doing things, too. I, I was to keep taking I my don't, wedding. Don't take that as me. I was really just thinking about animals and thinking about my answer. I'm totally plugged in and enjoying this conversation. Me, too. Um, and I was ordering on Amazon a few minutes ago. I was, <laughs> I was getting a, no. uh, a ball hair trimmer. I totally relate to what you're saying about people like caring more about animals and humans because I find myself to be someone that is like that where I just think that humans, there are enough humans that care about humans that I need to be one of the ones that cares more about animals. And it just comes easier to me to empathize with animals for some reason. Well, because you know, like, you've, you've met enough humans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just like, uh, yeah, you, I. I have not met a dog that like sucks, you know, or that I feel like, you know, you kind of got yourself in this position, buddy. This was, you kind of asked for it. There's no animal. And, and not that I could say that about most people who I feel complete empathy for. I don't, I honestly don't think anyone chooses their position in life in any way. Um, cause I don't think there's any free will, but there's just animals. You, for you me, don't think that you wait, but let me back that up. You don't think there's free will. I mean, no. You, you were saying you could make a decision like career wise with what you want to do. It's That's, already made and it's going to be, it's going to, whatever I decide is already what's going to be decided. So you're believing, I have no control. So you, do you think everything's already happened already and there is no time? I don't know if it's that or if it's do you completely time travel? random. Are you from um, the future? No. I know, but the other day I did go for a run and I saw a flash of lightning. It was like really weird weather. It just all of a sudden this storm was coming in. And I go, oh, I think I can run before it starts pouring. And then I saw lightning in my, like, vision, like, just like, in front, you know, just a, a, like like as if I was about to start having a migraine or something. And I, like, was like, am I prophesizing, like, getting struck by lightning? Is this a sign? If it happens again, I'm going back home. And then it happened again. And I was like, I sprinted home because I was like, no, you I should have seen the future. I well, was that's, like, it, well, we're animals and we do have those senses. We are yeah. aware. I, I truly believe and it's obvious that you can tell when you see animals restless and I've been living in LA a long time. It's, yeah. it, it's earthquake time. You know, you can, right. you can feel it and, and you, everything gets kind of quiet and kind of calm. And then I'm not surprised by it. I don't like yep. it, but it's natural. I mean, yeah. it's just the earth dry heaving because everybody's so gross. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. The earth is just like, and it's just like sweating up on the, the glaciers. The glaciers are just like sweating because it's just like, yeah, it's oh, just, you it's guys just, suck. It's the earth. It's, 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 flops, it's flop sweat. How am I going to get through this? <laughs> how am I going to get through this year? Oh my God. Yeah. Everybody's such an asshole. And it's, hurricanes are just it like exhaling just out of like defeat. Like, yeah. Like, it's just, I'm giving up. It's just a flu. It's diarrhea. It's what <laughs> the Earth has yes. diarrhea. It well, really I do does. think we have. I, I do think the Earth's like a human being in a way, uh, mm-hmm. and that it, we're watching it. We're watching the oceans are cleaner. Stuffs, the air is clearer. 
But I know it's I all hope gonna, we learn something from this, but it's all going to go back to the way it was. People it's gonna are double. too. It's going to be double. This guy's going to yeah, be like people, triple black. You think black. people are going to. Wow, I haven't even thought about that. Like everyone's going to use twice as much. You would, we, you would hope that we'd split the difference and use half as much to realize, oh, we don't need all that we are doing, but we need a little bit of it. But you're right. I bet we'll double down because all, we're all the new cars will be Batmobiles. They'll all have like triple flames oh. and just smoke and soot. Clean coal yeah. is going to be running all the hybrids. <laughs> I God, I mean, I, I there's Clean nothing coal. surprises me anymore. Clean coal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this world has become what it's become where people just make I think I'm taking a hiatus from the news because I you don't know I don't know what it's doing for me anymore yeah I, mean, I don't even check in on it anymore because if something happens you get a text or you look at Twitter or yep and you know what happens CNN major, will let me know yeah, there will be an alert on my phone if something really goes down. I mean, that's the news that I get. Like, but my news is fun. Like, CNN told me yesterday that Anderson Cooper like has a new baby, and I was like, that was my news alert for the day. That you was guys nice know news. what I'm into. And I watched it, and it made me oh, happy. It made me. It was me, so nice. I know. I it know gave it. me actual hope, and I did not foresee that in that clip. I'm really glad that that was out there. And he's the guy that plays his cards close to his chest. You know, he's not the, he tries to be pretty officious and uh, he's a really good man, you know. So yeah. It's, I just, uh, I'm worried about my kids and I'm worried about the next generation and, and how, but people have always been, but uh, there'll be, there'll be something else. There'll be, you know, with this, this another hundred years, there's going to be, you know, I keep saying Cloverfield is coming. You know, it'll be. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like we're gonna make another hundred years the way it's looking to me. I just I think don't... we will. I think we will. I do. I My look, dad but isn't it funny that. that that's even debatable? But did, has every generation truly thought that about theirs? Yeah, Is... yeah. I used to hide under my desk uh, just to look up the teacher's skirt. <laughs> and she wore culottes one day, and it was just a buzz kill. But, uh, <laughs> Because she had nankles, which are knees that are like cankles. Um, <laughs> Buzzkill but, is also uh, the, the what you get on your face after going down on her after she shaved. <laughs> <laughs> and this was back in the 60s, so we know there yeah. was a, there was oh, a whole... Oh, it would have been... It was Grizzly rough. Adams. It was tough. <laughs> she was very Dan Haggerty. Uh, that, <laughs> that's who played Grizzly Adams. How old are you? I'm 36. Or about that, to be 36 in a month. By the I'm way, that's there. the 20,000th time I've asked that question. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't know. No, right before they call Amber Alert. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my name in every Amber Alert? Why does it always say, you know, kid missing? Is it you, Bob? You know what? Everybody gets it. <laughs> they, do They're, they personalize them for everyone? <laughs> they all are, right? I mean, it's, I paid for that service, so people think I'm important, <laughs> you know? Nine-year-old <laughs> missing, Bob. <laughs> oh, God, I've got to move when this is over. Yeah, why? I don't know. I don't. I love my house. I, I just have a rat Great. problem. I, no, uh, you don't. I do, I do. My agent really? keeps coming over. No, uh, <laughs> no, there is. That's old. But there, but there, I have for a long time. I have, have And you can, like, hear air- them in the walls and stuff? Yeah, there's one left, but we don't know how they get in because I've had the house completely. It's a literally a compound. You can't get in or out. It's like uh, the Contra here. You you cannot, <laughs> you know. I, and I'm, it's but um, there's one on the wall, and you hear them. You hear the guy, and it's just it's it's pretty disturbing. And then you see them take it out, and but we've I've confined them down to one space in a little attic. Um, oh, so you just have like a little. They're pets at this point. You, yeah, I feed them, talk to them. Yeah, and they're mm-hmm. and they're. Uh, I sing the song "Ben" by Michael Jackson. Um, <laughs> I'm always playing Michael Jackson in the house. You know, yeah. in every every room, a different Michael Jackson song. Oh, that's fun. I wonder when the pandemic is over and Vegas is back, uh, because we oh, know yeah. the mayor mayor's got that down right. Uh, oh my gosh, she is such a cartoon of a person. And her mouth's upside down. Did you notice that? Her mouth is actually... It's like a Dick Tracy character. Um, 
But it's not nice to make fun of somebody's looks, and I've learned that from our, our it leaders. It is when they're a bad person. Or just incredibly dumb, or, or just, just, yeah, just saying what they have to say. But they're yeah, essentially a bad person. Yeah. yeah she's got out a little, for themselves, little, little. selfish. Well, she says she's out to put everybody back to work, but there was a Michael Jackson show right. at the Mandalay Bay called One, and I asked if that was his dating range. Um I- and uh, that didn't go over. Um, that's I didn't watch the documentary. I couldn't do it. Did you watch it? Oh, you didn't? Oh, yeah. I I I didn't really. I'm not someone who's like was really that sad that he. I wasn't like, oh, I can't enjoy Michael Jackson's music anymore. Like, I still enjoy. It. I don't really. Su- I've always thought he was a pedophile. I just think it was weird that we all accepted it for so long. Actually, like looking back, it's like when you watch the documentary, you're like how did everyone just make jokes of this and didn't do anything? Like everyone knew, but just let it happen. And even me as like a kid, I was just like, ah, ha, ha. what do Michael, what do Michael Jackson and JC Penny have in common? They have boys pants half off. And it's just like, it was just like a common joke yeah. and we, while he was doing it. And I think that's what the documentary showed was that um, how brazen it was. And, and it was devastating to see. I think it's important though, to see what, sexual abuse does to people and how it can impact their life forever and how many people are walking around with sexual abuse and especially young boy or like men who are so ashamed of it because it was maybe a thing that happened that makes them feel like they're gay or you know on top of the trauma of sexual abuse that just haunts them forever I mean I just I thought it was so brave and important that those like those adult men were like crying and saying what they went through and but it, it's fucking hard to watch, dude. Real hard to watch. I can't watch it, but my I, I uh, it's hard to explain. But personally, I I had two sisters, and you know when you have and I have three daughters, and and that whole thing, you 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 know what goes on in the world, and yeah. it's been. I had one sister that was it's just too sad to even talk about. It. I don't think I'll ever yeah. talk about it. But it's just um, it's so tragic what people go through the trauma and some of them never process it ever. Yeah. That's the thing where you're like, so many people must never even think about it. All they do is just spend their life pushing it down. And that's, that's such a a tragic part of it. No one ever gets help. And some people as as upsetting as this is, and this is where my comedy came from. This is why I would make those kind of horrible jokes. Why would you do a pedophile joke? Because it's the worst thing on the earth. And And that's how I deal with it. it. and if you don't joke about it, then we don't ever talk about pedophilia. And then everyone keeps doing it. And then, but, but, but then people say we're making light of it, which is understandable. <laughs> if it's happened to them, they're going, "I can't take that joke," or the or I the know that. In, incest joke. So I'm sensitive to it. And sure. we're in a world where we got to be careful. But uh, so I try to tee it up with a disclaimer before and after, but right in the middle is the worst thing I could possibly say. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. But what about the kid that's you know, two or three and has no recall, doesn't know what oh. happened to them. Yep. So they, something's and then wrong. Their they need to whole somehow life is, yes. figure it out. They need help so badly. Yeah. And eventually, hopefully they just like deal with their addictions or whatever it brings out on in those levels. And, and like, can, because you can't remember the trauma. Like a lot of those times like that happens and you're just like, how, yeah, how are they going to process it later? But I even think that so many of the, the reasons you are the way you are, I'm the way I am is because when we were babies, something fucked up happened, you know, as much as like we were crying alone in a room and we felt really stressed out and no one came to get us for a, too, an hour too long. Like that can cause a trauma that you're trying to figure out the rest of your life. Through. Well, I know, I know one that happened to me and I was yeah. a baby and my mother told me that I had an infection on my testicles and there was a purple cream and she administered, th- I yelled at her, she passed away a few years ago, but I was really angry at her not long ago <laughs> before yeah. she pa- before she passed away. Being angry at her now doesn't really help out. But, um, right. but uh, yeah. she, she, she put the cream on my testicles with her hand. She went mm-hmm. hand Bob's balls mm-hmm. and, she, and I said, why didn't you use a Kleenex? Why didn't you use anything? Why didn't you use a diaper? You were my yeah. baby. You're my baby. My, right. Your baby? 
That's your bare hand and my balls. Balls. And you, you remember that. You shouldn't have done that. You, you did. And I got the infection on my hand, too. Well, you deserved it, woman. Yeah. Because you shouldn't have touched your baby's balls. Right. It, you don't do. And I have and, three daughters. I've changed their diapers, uh, of course. And yes. if there was something to do with their uh, areas, I would use a diaper. If I had, to, if they had a rash, I would use a diaper. You don't go bare hand. You don't go bare to hand. The baby. I've never really it's, thought about that. Yeah, you don't put on. Yeah, I completely agree. Use a wax mold. Use paraffin and uh, hot wax. Uh, baby, yeah. you know the the pain is. I yes, think, if you when you're waxing your baby, use. Some babies are very hairy down there when they're born. <laughs> oh my God. You know how the baby's yeah. got a, you know how a baby will be born and it'll have like all this black hair like a mohawk yes. and then it all falls off and then it comes out blonde and it starts to yes. come in and feathers in normally. But that's, you know, a lot of kids are born with incredibly with hairy girls, boys, whatever. Um, are you being serious right now? Is that true? No, I'm just trying to celebrate. <laughs> I mean, imagine that if, well, if, you're, if well, your baby, yeah. like a baby comes out, it's just got to, it must, must have happened. I've never heard anybody even discuss it. Oh, it has to have happened, but they probably all like looked at each other. Like, we're not going to talk about this, are we? Or, or some families go, look at the bush on my son. You know, it's like, yeah, really proud. Well, your daughter. Wow. She's going to need yeah. some sca escaping. No, I remember, like, you even talking about this, like, I rem parents don't think it's weird, but, like, the things you remember that you're like, why did that happen? Like, there's a picture of me kissing a boy when I'm two, like, kissing another little boy. And my parents were just, like, probably, like, oh, these kids are, are hugging, and they were, and, and we probably kissed once, and everyone was like, that's cute, K kiss again. So there's, like, this photo of me kissing a boy, and we're both, like, clothed. I mean, it's not like, and we're playing, but I just always hated that photo so much as a little girl, and I was like, why I don't like boys. I don't want to kiss boys. Now there's this evidence of me kissing a boy. It was always like the joke of like Nikki kissed a boy. And I was like, but I was a baby and I didn't know what I was doing. And now I'm like, there's this evidence. So I think that being forced, forced in quotes to kiss a boy just for a picture when I was a baby made me feel really weird about kissing boys until today. You know, like I don't, I, I have this weird anxiety around kissing boys. That even, um, and I still say boys because those are the men I'm dating, but like it's, th there's things young where you're like, oh, that's just innocent. You're like, no, mom and dad, you shouldn't have taken a picture of it. You shouldn't have um, instigated it. And it's weird. I have something like that. My cousin Brenda still jokes with me today. She's a year older than me. We're in a bathtub together. I was two. I'm standing up. I'm like out. I'm just naked. Yeah. And and I'm and, Your bush and is she's out. sitting in the my incredibly hairy little muffin and she's uh my Brillo pad of tuft. She's sitting in, in the <laughs> it hasn't tub. Fallen out yet. <laughs> <laughs> and and she's sitting there in the bathtub, covered up pretty much by the water. Yeah. And I'm just like proud like some Venus de yeah. Milo. And there's a picture of it and my parents took it and it's like, Why did you do that? Right. And and then my cousin will always say to me, how about that picture? You better be nice or I'll send it out to people. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, this isn't good. I know she's kidding, but I mean, of course, why bring it up. Why it's is just... this a thing where you your penis as a little boy is the butt of a joke for? Well, the thing family. is, I finally grew into it. So that's uh... <laughs> it just looks so absurdly large. Oh, my God. It was like literally like a baseball bat. It was <laughs> um, I wish. Oh God, I have. Uh, a, I used to say I have penis envy. I wish I was my penis, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why would great. I want to be my penis? No, that is so funny. That's my favorite kind of joke because you kind of sometimes. I'm sure you do. Like your penis doesn't even know that it's his penis. Like it's not like it's just chilling down there. Like there are sometimes that I could look at my vagina and be like, God, I wish I was a vagina as opposed to the carrier of a vagina. Yeah, you could just hang out. You're a carrier. Which is what mine is doing. You're just, it hangs out? <laughs> it's just hanging out. <laughs> is it, it's just is chilling. It's really, you know, it's just having a really relaxing quarantine. It's not putting a lot of pressure on itself to do a lot. It's a shame you can't go to a, like, they're going to open tattoo parlors. It's a shame you can't go to piercing. You could get, like, nine rings. 
through it, you know? Oh, I could get more than that. It's really grown. Oh, it's grown? <laughs> I really feel like sometimes I like shave and I'm like, has it changed? But I just think vaginas like change throughout the month. I always used to hear Joan Rivers talk about how like her vagina is like falling. And I was always like, that's not going to happen. But like every part of you starts to fall. And like maybe it is. I'm not opposed to like getting it stitched up. It might hurt. It might It might always Yeah, hurt. it would hurt so much. But then it would look tight and cute as fuck. Well, Surgery maybe that's hurt. what you want. If you're going to do a photo shoot and you want to get ready for that, or yeah. if you're going to go to the Met Ball and you're right. going to wear a special breakaway outfit, <laughs> no, it's you the can Met show No your... Balls is what I want it to look like. No yeah, Balls. Yeah, I mean. So you're saying it's starting to look like it has balls? I mean, like, that's what uh, your vaginal lips are is, like, what Don't say my are. vaginal lips because that's bad for my cred. <laughs> it takes down my street value. Well, you, we all have the same parts down there. Ours are just, like, don't have like actual ball like i don't have balls but i'm just wait like saying, we all have the same parts down there we kind of do clits and dicks are the same labia and uh scrotums are the same you guys just have testes and we ours are empty and don't we need but it's all kind of the same stuff but clits See, are this like, is like a science class for me why didn't they yeah. tell me this they they don't tell anyone you have to just but kind then of what about That's people why- that have to change it you know because they want to and they because they want it to look and look and be used and perceived as as the the other part but like some girls have like super big clits that would look like a micro penis and some guys have micro penises or like that look like chode a chode like a small hormel uh midget franks can yeah like that would be yeah that would be a bummer. I really feel for guys with or very, a, very like a cork. tiny penises. Like a cork, yeah. Cork uh, is uh, a bad but uh, a erect, cork can grow in erect, it, erect, it's a cork. <laughs> oh, okay, then, yeah, that's, I mean, I just I mean, that's, want, but they shouldn't be ashamed of it. That's the other thing. I mean, you can, well, you can get a couple of uh, chopsticks and try to get it hard. I know it's, that's the problem. It's like you tell them not to be ashamed of it, but then girls are so mean about dick size and everyone makes jokes about, can you imagine having a really small penis and like having to hear about dick size all the time and not wanting to just like, that's my dream. Your- that's all. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want. That's what, what <laughs> I want my existence to be. Yeah, it would be terrible, but cause so, but I, you know, obviously, you know, how you, you know how you know if you have a really big penis, how you just know. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, if you have a really small one, if like you have to go to the bathroom and there's like a roach clip by the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Oh. It all comes yeah. down to that. Look where our conversation went. It finally just ended up there. I know, but I want to give anyone with a very tiny, tiny, tiny penis hope that like it doesn't matter and that there are like amazing women that will still love you. And you can use other things, you can use toys. You know, right? Like you like can, uh, Legos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, corks, bigger corks. Right. And um, and and what about ladies that are having that gravity issue? I mean, is it a problem? And, and I don't want to offend anybody. I want to ask you, do guys? I mean, like that's so many women are so embarrassed about their vaginas because they're just as much as men are insecure about. Their, I don't their, understand their that. I mean, if you're at, if say you're at uh at the pool at at the club. And yeah. you're, you're getting older and you're, you know, you're in your seventies and you get up from the plastic chair, but it goes with you. And then you hear <laughs> some kind of a, you know, like a pulling a, a dart <laughs> off a wall. You know, you hear a, a suction cup sound. Is that, right. is that embarrassing? That can be embarrassing. If your lips are like hanging out. What if, if you're so to, like, old you don't know up. it? What if you just don't know? I can't it? wait to be that old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I can't, that, when when you reach the age that you don't care that everything's falling, that'll be great. It's this weird age where you still care and you're starting to see it go. Um, yeah, you need, I mean, You need a are, walker just because your labor is pulling you down? <laughs> I think it's the same with testicles. That's why you're accurate. I mean, it is. The, the gravity pulls on them. Right, that's the same. It's the right. same. And um, I, 
like for us, you can just tie them and do like a cute little bow as they get big enough, but or a, just knot it. But um, make our no, I don't know the option. I mean, there's surgery, and then there's or there's just like who gives a fuck? I am what I am. Tuck it up, and I I like that. I I prefer that. And and if you love, if you're with somebody that loves you, they're fine with it. They're not gonna go, hey, do me a favor. And, and try to remove the change purse you have there and change it up. Yes, that's what it feels like, a change purse. That's so accurate, Bob. <laughs> Jesus, that's so funny. Like, <laughs> it seems like you're, sometimes your vagina just feels like it's so much. But the times that I, like, I always, like, I've been single for a really long time now, and I haven't had sex in a year or almost over a, a, over a year at this point. Um, Did you have to kill the person after it was over so they wouldn't talk <laughs> about much- it? That's how you feel sometimes. It's like I have to have them sign an NDA like they're at a Pete Davidson show. And <laughs> I just whatever happens here, don't tell anyone. No, I, I generally do feel anxiety like, oh, my God, someone's going to like me for me. And like we're going to hook up and then they're going to see my vagina and they're going to like not be able to be with me. Because like, I don't know, there might be a circumstance in which a guy is fantastic and his dick is so bad that I'm like, I can't deal with I can't do this. You know, and so um, I always panic about it, but I've never even had a single complaint. And whoever you're with, you end up just like kind of joking about your vagina or your dick with, I would guess. You know, like once you get to love someone, like your body parts don't, you don't compare them to other people. They're just theirs, you know? Right. Unless you're on porn when they're asleep. That is. Yeah, you got. You have to stop watching porn because you can't. Yeah, you and that's it's, what that's what you have to do, ladies. Is you have to demand that they stop watching porn so they have nothing to compare your droopy, sad, baggy vagina to. They need just you need to get them away from um, what it's supposed to look like, which but is there based is on, porn that people look at that is all that it is. The oh more, yeah, yeah. There are people that but are it's a it, you got to dig for it. That's not front page porn. Front page I, I think vagina. you just add the word freak on Google. Yeah. <laughs> you just add that word. Well, change purse. You can just put that in or, um, <laughs> I, yeah. So, oyster someone mushroom. Someone crosses their oyster mushrooms. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Truffle dick. Um, <laughs> and it's like, boy, that girl was a pig. It's like, no, no, no. You have a truffle dick. So what I've done with that, what about I just said offends everyone. There is no one that's not offended by <laughs> truffle dick. I don't think that offends. No, but I anyone. said la- ladies. I said a lady was a pig, but pigs find truffles. That's what I meant. Oh, but people that's misconstrue right. and think Bob, that I'm saying. Bob, you're jumping ahead. You are projecting. You are future tripping. No one thinks that. All right, all right. I don't know. I just get like weird stuff, or like with a podcast, they go. Uh, please uh, review and rate and you know oh I don't want to read those let them review it uh, but don't but read they, it Bob don't but a personal it. go they'll just type a bunch of different letters and then go I hate you and they won't have listened <laughs> they, no that's them what listen. are they doing it's like it's like going on uh, DoorDash and just just writing obscenities I hate you to a Chinese so restaurant so weird I we will never be have a chance to see but like seeing the people be- behind some comments I would, I would love to see like what they're doing, what they're thinking, what motivates these people to even go out of their way to, to leave. I, like I go on Twitter sometimes cause I like to block people. I, I was, I'm very proud of it sometimes cause I won't, I won't let negative in anymore. I already know my faults. I don't need to be told I'm, I'm pretty yeah. self-deprecating. I know what's wrong with me. And, mm-hmm. um, and they'll say something terrible or just, I hate you. And then I look at them and they've got nine followers and then there's like swastikas and stuff. And I'm like, well, of course you hate me. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's have, have so a nice, refreshing uh, non- when it's from 2020 and they hate, they said something mean and then you go and they, there's like a bald eagle on there. You're like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I don't need you to like me. Or an American flag with two stars on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, I don't it's, know. It's so sad that like now like being patriotic just lets you know, like you're crazy. What are you proud of right now? I'm proud. I'm, I mean, you bring it up. I always go serious with, with, with a question like that. I'm proud that there are good people that we're watching that we're oh, hearing yeah. and that people are doing, people are taking over right now and, and had to, and, and the medical profession, especially, and the scientists, oh, those darn scientists, you know, trying mm-hmm. to come up with, 
with the truth rather than let's rush Clorox into your veins. You know? I know. And the people working so hard against such opposition and they're heroes leaders they're, being and, and, d- denying it's just it's it's insane i can't i don't know how they do it and how they how they go to work every day and, and keep doing it it's it's and new york incredible. city i've got two kids in new york city and there and i have friends i had a friend with coronavirus who literally almost died they were about to put him on a ventilator and he, oh my god he then went with forced oxygen which which solved the problem but his lungs are still scarred he's still hurting and there's different levels of it, but New York is so concentrated. It's just been wild yeah. to tell everybody. But but we'll, we'll all get through all this, and then you'll be out, and I'll be out, and we'll be making more people happy. And then we'll I be can't happy. wait to yeah socialize again and run into friends and the, thank God for podcasts and stuff like this. Just being able to connect with people because yeah, this is nice because we would it, it would be like yeah, hey we, Kelly and I want to talk to you. Why don't we get a glass of wine? It's like ah, yeah, I don't know. That's I know. Right. Will we ever do let's, that? Let's have a purpose. <laughs> yes, this, it's this creepy feels otherwise. like running back stage, running into you backstage at the, the at somewhere and and having a fun con- like it's it felt real. This is even better because backstage would be like fifteen minutes unless we decided to oh let's go get somebody to eat and there's like yeah. five of us. That's rare. You, you it's kinda, rare nowadays. And forgetting the pandemic, it's rare anyway because everybody's yep. out doing their own shows. Everybody's headlining somewhere else. And now sometimes mm-hmm. I'll be in a city and I'll find out a friend is there, and that's rare. But I'll take advantage of that. Yeah, I'll but go, we're all. Yeah. Do, I do stand up too much. I'm gonna start taking the time to like hang out and be more be more social instead of just running from spot to spot every night. And, and I've stopped that. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm not the guy that wants to work out. I mean, I'll go in. I don't want to be on the lineup. I don't want to take the money. I, yeah. I don't want to bump people either. So I'll do six, seven minutes of something. I really want to work on this. This will help me. Cause if I get four minutes out of something that I did at the comedy store, or the improv or the laugh factory, just being in town, then it's it's helpful, but to bump people that are doing an hour of my new hour, Bob's new hour in the main room, it just oh, that's not, yeah. it's not me. But some right. people are amazing at it, you know. Um, you know, Joe will do it, or, or or Bill or Chris will do it, and that's their special thing. But and I yeah, I went through the I was in the comedy store for so many years. I hosted so many years there and tried to get a job so many years. And it was, uh, it's amazing that it's what it is now. I mean, it's like great. I know. And, I, and I love the so seller. I, I feel like the seller is the least competitive for some reason. It just hmm. feels like every moment is just what it is. But maybe I'm wrong because I get to come in, you know, fair weather, Bob. And, and Oh, yeah. The seller is like, you know, that's the top tier in New York City. Everyone wants to get past there. Everyone's fighting for spots. I mean, they have four r- or three rooms now, so you get there's a lot more shows. Right. Because comedy so was so popular, but um, and it will be the- again yeah. when we're all not going to kill each other by being in a room. <laughs> I hope so. When will that be? Do you think? I think the middle of next year will be total safety, and I think we'll take practice runs at it. Are you willing to go out and do a date? Um, in September, you're you got stuff scheduled. So do I. I in do like have September, stuff October. It's gonna be. You know, we don't know. Think that that's okay. And and you don't want an audience with all face masks on either, because sounds like they all have something in their mouths. Yeah, it's I. Yeah, you don't want people social distancing in your audience. The the, the part of a stand up show that what makes stand up good is that everyone's packed in tight, and that's. That's what makes good stand up. And then it's an event know. too, because it's like I was watching something. One thing I like about TikTok, besides the fact that it's so important for culturally, but um, they run a lot of Beatles stuff on there. And John Lennon was saying how it's so they're not nervous if they're in front of a huge amount of people, but they they were nervous with a small audience. Yeah. So if they had three hundred people, they were more nervous than if they were in front of you know. 20,000 people or 100,000 people when they were touring. So yeah. that was kind of an interesting experience because you you can't fail in front of a giant crowd because it's very hard for people to turn on you. You, you know, you've yeah, got to, yeah. So, but, but I, I'm going to do more clubs because the theaters aren't, they're not able to be Live Nation and AEG. They're not able to get up and running as 
the end of the year club. happens. If if oh. we're if we're able to get into clubs, right? If they, don't, if they don't move the dates. Oh, but interesting. I, because there'll have to be smaller amounts of people. Yeah, I should probably look into doing clubs again then. Well, if you want to get stuff out, but if it's safe, yeah. I, mean, I haven't had the damn thing, so I don't. I don't want to. Anyway, I just yeah, I gotta I gotta move out of my parents' house first. I don't think you happens. should. I th- I, I like kind this. Of, I'm very cozy here. I got to be honest. There's a part of me that's not looking forward to this lifting because I just like it here. Well, you you let's keep in touch and and when this is over, let's actually like go to dinner and maybe throw in another person that we both love. I would Ooh. love it. And we'll do it and because Kelly's crazy about you and uh, I went. I don't have Nikki's number and Kelly's like I do. I'm like what? What's going <laughs> on here? What kind of thing? What do you guys talk about? Labia. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> well, thank you for, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you it. for having me. I love you, Bob. I love you too, Nikki. And how much longer can we hear your serious show? Just next. It, it's over by the time this comes out. Oh, darn. But you can hear my podcast. There's podcast episodes. of uh, It's called You Up. It's the podcast. And uh, and I'll have something out real soon next. So just you can follow me on Instagram, Nikki Glazer. And you're going to be everywhere forever. I mean, I just adore you. And you have, I, I can't wait to watch what unfolds. I can, because I don't want to be like a uh, hundred and go, look what a big star she is. <laughs> as, as my balls hit the ground and they suction cup to a toadstool. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me. <laughs> Thank you for making me laugh. Thanks, Bob. You too. Give my love to your parents. I will. Bye, Bob. Bye. Bye. Nikki Glazer, she is such a doll, and uh, I don't know. I'm just so happy that she was here. Um, and I am. Oh, by the way, maybe it's too late to tell you, but uh, uh, you know, please don't uh, <laughs> don't don't uh, listen to this if you're uh, under 14. Um, it got darker in my room, so if you're watching this on the YouTube, I'm very grainy right now so i apologize for that i also have the pandemic haircut which means i walk in uh, to the bathroom every now and then and just do a little snip here and it happens every day just a new hair hair is out of place cut it off so um i'm pretty hairless back to the conversation i had with nikki um i hope you guys are doing well uh you got a rate review and and don't be a fool and just say something mean and not listen to it If, if you listen to it the whole thing and then, or if you say, I, the worst for me is when you say, I couldn't get through the first 10 minutes. It's like, well, maybe you, uh, I don't know. Maybe you need to go to a some kind of Berlitz course to understand me. But um, can't insult your audience, Bob. What's wrong with you? Anyway, I'm sending you guys a lot of goodness and a lot of, a lot of love. And um, I'll be talking to you because uh, I'm here for you. And that's, it's Bob Saget's here for you. There is another podcast called Here For You, and I hope I do them business by mentioning them. And I didn't know there was one. and uh, But it's not a sentence, which is Bob Saget's Here For You, which is using my name in a sentence, which is scary. Um, and uh, so anyway, uh, what you want to do also is subscribe. You want to subscribe to this. And uh, what you really want to do is take care of yourself and be good to yourself. And um, I don't know. Just try to laugh throughout these hard times, and uh, I'll try to do my part in bringing you entertainment in whatever form that may be. And uh, thanks again to Nikki Glazer. I just adore her, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Okay, I don't know about you, and I'm going to leave it at that. I just don't know about you, but I know about me, 
And I know that there are times where I don't shave. And um, in this world we're living in right now, sometimes I'll put a mask on and I'll go outside or I'll go somewhere. And it's not that easy all the time when you've got a beard that's a bit out of control. And maybe it's a little craggly and, and coming up in places you don't like. And maybe you'd like to groom it up a little bit and make your face look a little better. Maybe you got a hairy neck. There's all kinds of stuff. Maybe you got hair all over your face. Maybe you're a Sasquatch. Well, times are tough right now for everybody, even if you live in the woods. But Harry's has your grooming needs covered with high-quality blades as low as $2 each. That is cheap. Delivered straight to your doorstep. Why look like a Wookiee? Why not look nice? You know, is that a mustache? What is that, a soul patch? You know, you can't define what it is if it's just growing in blotches. You go to Harry's, and their razors help you look your best. And you don't understand what I'm saying, because I didn't understand until I saw the product and understood what these blades were about. You can get a Harry's trial set delivered to your doorstep right now. You hear me? Right now by going to harrys.com slash bob. I love that it's slash bob. I just don't want it done to me because I don't want to slash bob. I want to use a Harry's razor, which knows exactly what it's doing. It's I'll tell you all about it because it does things that other razors don't do. And it's all about the blade, right? Harry's is a return to the essential quality durable blades that, well, some of us don't have anymore, and it's at a fair price. That's what's so different. It's just $2 per blade. That's right. You heard right. I know you're you're doing a double take. Your eyes are popping out like Roger Rabbit. $2 a blade. They cut out the middleman manufacturing blades in their German blade factory that's been owning precision blades for a century. We're talking 100 years of blades that they have perfected, which means you get incredibly high-quality blades at factory direct prices. And Harry's is super convenient because blade refills are delivered directly to your door on your schedule, with or without a subscription. And it can be your door. They deliver it to your door. You can shave your door. What if your door is hairy and you want to like clean your door up and give it a soul patch right under the knocker? In this challenging time that we're all living through, feel a little better about your purchase. This is nice. 1% of proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations devoted to helping provide access to better health care for men and for veterans. And listeners of my show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash bob. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, a five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com slash bob to start shaving better today. 